Good morning all. Today I want to implement the ACK payload which is a bit tricky but we'll see how we get on. Now the ACK payload is the way that the receiver and this is the receiver is able to send some data back to the transmitter. Sounds like it's the wrong way around but uh, when the transmitter sends packet data to the receiver the receiver says yeah I got that but you can also send some data back in that acknowledgement and I'm hoping to send back just one byte in fact it'll just be one boolean which will be the value of this switch now although this touch sensor switch is working the LED which I've now put on D3 output um, won't come on because I haven't written the code to take D2 input which is the output of the sensor and copy it onto the D3 output. I wanted to put the LED on the D3 output because it has a higher current drive than the output of the sensor itself, which can only source four milliamps. So looking again at the receiver code, a uh, number of you pointed out here that we don't need a while within an if. So I've commented out the if, I might actually take that out completely now, which is remove that and remove that I believe should do it okay so just to get this LED working uh, in setup I need a pin mode so let's put that in but I can't remember the uh, syntax so I'll just <laughs> type that for now and then in the loop I need to uh, say D3 and again I can't remember the syntax uh, set it equal to D2, something like that. I'll just sort that out and get that to uh, to function. So what that ended up being is in setup a pin mode, three as an output, in loop, digital write three uh, is the digital read of two. But there is a little bit of an unexpected behavior here. Let's have a look. So it's fine, it works. You press the sensor and assuming it's calibrated, it turns the LED on and off and packet data is coming through. Um, but it's the boot up behavior I'm a bit concerned about because when I unplug it and boot it up, after it's done all the USB shenanigans, it comes on with the fan in the on state um, that's not ideal. Now I could fudge it by simply inverting the read of D2, which I might do actually. Let's just confirm that this is a consistent behavior. And once again, after the USB stuff, yeah, the fan comes on. Not ideal. Let's make a quick change. So is this just as simple as putting a knot in front of the digital read 2, uh, which is one of those, isn't it? I'll give that a try, see if it works. And yeah, that seems to have fixed it if I power it down and power it up. It'd be quicker if this wasn't a USB, if it was just power, because then it can do all this stuff. But that comes on, this comes on in the off state, and then I can touch the sensor and turn it on and off. So that's kind of fixed that, and the packets are still being transmitted. Looking now at the transmitter code, I want to uncomment this which is radio enable ACK payload. And what that does is it enables us to put um, some data into the acknowledge so that the transmitter sends the packet, the receiver then sends back an acknowledge, but it also sends a payload. And that could be a number of bytes. In this case, it's only gonna be one and it's going to be actually a boolean, a yes or no, and that's whether or not the fan uh, on off signal is on or off. Now, if I enable this in the transmitter, I also have to enable it in the receiver, otherwise I'll break uh, the connection. Thanks to Chris, iForce2D for just confirming that. So I'm going to copy this radio enable ACK payload and copy that into the receiver code. So here it is in the receiver code. We've now got five radio uh, functions here or methods. Begin, open a reading pipe, set the data rate to 250k BPS. That was what gave me a slight increase in range. Uh, enable the ACK payload, that, and that means we can send data back in the acknowledge. And start listening on the radio, because this is the receiver code. 
And I've got a feeling this is a bit tight to the bottom of the capture now, so I'm just going to do, is it a control minus? Yeah, a couple of control minuses to slightly reduce the size of the font. And on we go. Now I'm just going to have to um, upload the data, the uh, transmit file, this one into the transmitter, uh, and also do the receiver again, upload them both, compile and upload so that they both have the ACK payload enabled uh, and we can then see whether that carries on working. So with the transmitter temporarily connected to my PC I'm just compiling and uploading the... oh and it's actually going I think, yeah you can just see the lights flickering there. So that's uploaded the transmitter sketch with the ACK payload enabled. Now I will take that off and just power it separately and let's now upload the receiver code into the receiver. Switch to the receiver code. Compile and upload that. And make sure that everything is still working once that's done. So the ACK payload is now enabled on both transmitter and receiver. My switch still works. So now what I need to do is take the Boolean value uh, from the D2 input and somehow wrap it up as um, a payload for the acknowledge so that we can send it back to the transmitter from the receiver. Hmm, fun. So this is where I need to integrate the ACK payload. Now this is my old wearable sketch from many years ago. And this was done slightly differently. On here, the new one, I had if radio available and then a while radio available inside that. Well, we worked out that wasn't necessary. So now we've just got a while radio available. In the old Maniac bug code, it was done slightly different. It was if radio available, but then there was this while not done, bool done equals false. I don't really understand all that. But it seems that the radio write act payload is just this line here. Uh, the parameters being one, a uh, array, but you have to say you have to say ampersand array, or you did back then. I don't know whether you do now, and then the size of the array. So we need a new array uh, here. I think it was two bytes. Let's just scroll up a bit. Yeah, int j two two element array holding ack payload. So that was integers. I'm going to do it as a bool. So I think all I need to do really is copy this right ack payload line. Let's copy that and put it in my sketch. Now, does it need to be inside this while loop or could it be outside the while loop? Here, it appears to be inside the if radio available. So I think I'll shove it inside for the moment. Let's just poke it in there and uh, create another um, array. Now I'm not going to call it J because that's pretty meaningless. I think I'm going to call it payload because that's what it is. Payload and it'll have to be size of payload. And I'm going to put in a new um, variable here but I want to bool payload and it's an array, but it's only one element. So I think it's that. But of course, this is going to have to change because payload, we need some data in it, and it's going to be the not digital read two. So I think I'm going to have to do this in two uh, statements. Payload mm, element zero will be not digital read two. And then I want to digital write three payload zero. I'll just alter that. Now I was just having a quick look at the original transmitter sketch and radio write was able to be just I. I was an array which I've now called packet but radio read had to be ampersand J and it's something to do with pointers and I'm a bit sketchy on this so I'll leave the ampersand in. Uh, J was another uh, array which I've now called payload in my new sketch. So packet is from the transmitter to the receiver and payload is the thing that goes back the other way. So I'll leave the ampersand in because it was here. I'm just going to compile this receiver code. I can get rid of that and just make sure that I haven't broken anything 
by putting in the right ACK payload. Let's just try that. And uh, no, that's not broken. That's still receiving packets. And I can switch my Boolean value to a one or a zero. And it should be transmitting that back to the transmitter in the ACK payload. So when the receiver acknowledges that, re that it received the packet with all this data in it, it sends back a payload of just one byte containing one Boolean of a true or false. Okay, now we need to modify the code in the transmitter. Right, the receiver is on a power bank. The transmitter is on my PC now, but I need a way of seeing on the transmitter that it's getting a copy of this uh, fan on off digital Boolean true or false. And I found this uh, relay module. And if I hook this up to an output on the transmitter, there's a little LED on here. I've taken the link off so that the relay doesn't pull five volts from my PC. I don't really want it doing that. But if I hook this up to D2, I should be able to turn this LED on and off using the ACK payload data that comes back uh, from the receiver. <laughs> Let's give it a go. So that's connected up to D2. I'll need to define that as an output with a pin mode. I know how to do that now. And then try and get the ACK payload and write it to D2. Let's get back to the code. So now working on the transmitter sketch. Uh, this is my original transmitter sketch. And it looks like after doing a radio write, which I've got here in the loop, we simply do an if radio is act payload available and if so do a radio read into um, an array so i'll need to create an array uh, use this ampersand thing and then size of the array well it will be one byte and it'll be a boolean so i'll just bung some code in for that so i've copied that uh, line and modified it slightly i've created a payload uh, array of one boolean so that's one byte it should be uh, here in loop if radio is at payload available radio read into payload using this pointer thing size of payload that should be one because it's one byte now i need to do something with payload i need to do a uh, digital write uh, and that will be to pin 2, D2, comma, and then the actual data. Well, that should just be payload, uh, element array 0, close bracket, semicolon. The only thing I haven't done is done a pin mode. So I'll just copy that from the other file. Actually, let's go to that. Yeah, it's just that, isn't it? Let's just copy that back to the transmitter. That has to be in setup, doesn't it? So I do that after all the complicated stuff. Pin mode. Uh, and that'll be two, actually, because I'm using pin two to drive that relay LED. So is that going to work? Let's compile and upload. And yes, that there's the little LED on the relay board. Now the uh, logical sense is wrong. If I turn on that LED, the blue one, this one goes off. There is a bit of a delay. But then I guess it's because the uh, payload is only sent back every time the packet is sent. And it's currently doing that twice a second. Probably a bit longer than that because there's a delay of half a second. And then of course there's the whole loop involved but yeah if i turn that on that goes off turn that off and that comes on so if i put the link on here i should actually oop, i should actually be get, able to get the relay to click so the relay is on relay's dropped out the relay's back on now, as I say, the, there's an inversion and I've got a feeling it's here actually because I think the way this works is that the signal pin on this relay board 
pulls the LED in the opto isolator and of course this LED um, on when this is a logical zero. So I need to do an inversion. I want to keep the inversion here because that was related to powering this up and not having it turn the fan on as a default. But let's put another logical inversion in the transmitter, which of course, from the point of view of this fan switching on and off thing is actually the receiver. Uh, let's put a logical inversion in there and try and get this the right way around. So is that simply a case of doing a digital write to two of not payload zero, the inverse of whatever this Boolean is? That should do it, I think. So let's compile and upload that and see what the result is. And well, that appears to be it. So if I press that, then the relay comes on. As I say, there is a delay. Switch off my fan control, the relay goes off. On, off. Now what happens if I power this up? What happens to that relay? Because ideally it won't glitch. Let's connect that. That powers up. Oh, why are we getting no received data? Let's try that again. Okay, I don't know what that was. And no glitch, that's good. And then turn the fan on, relay comes on. Turn the fan off, relay goes off. Do you know, I think that's a result. So the next thing I want to do is I want to have two more float variables on my display, which show the voltage of the 12 volt lead acid battery that's gonna be in the shed driving the fan um now i'm not sure about the relay voltage i might leave that as a five volt relay this is a five volt relay and it's actually taking the five volts from this connection here so it's drawing it off the arduino so it's actually pulling it out of my pc at the moment switch that relay on uh, so i want the voltage to be shown on here and also I want the fan current so i want a voltage and current measuring maybe one of those ina is it 219s 129 i can't remember the number but uh, yeah, voltage and current on here, because I was thinking of having when the uh, fan relay turned on a little symbol here saying fan is on, but you don't know that the fan is actually on and running unless you can see that the voltage on the battery dips a bit when you turn the fan on and that the current goes from zero up to, I think, six amps that that fan is going to take. So yeah, I want two more floats on here, voltage and current coming from a current and voltage sensor at the transmitter end. Remember this transmitter stuff is all going to be in the shed running off um, some little gel, some lead acid gel batteries. They're actually 17 amp hours each. That's 34 amp hours. I'm going to put them both in parallel. But I think that's it for today. I've actually uh, got a result. Cheerio.